Good morning, folks. This week there will be a huge project announcement from the observers. If you listen to Fly on the Wall, you already know, and you are welcome to chat about it in the comment section. It's not really a secret. Anyway, looking left, that huge filament structure is falling apart. We will take a closer look at that in a moment. Let's come right to spaceweathernews.com where our star is calming compared to previous days. We had a CME come our way and a number of flares that even cracked up into M-class range, but nothing more. A weak uptick indicative of long-term decreasing strength. The sunspot situation remains largely unchanged. We still have delta-class magnetism at the polarity collision in the center of that grouping there. And now, where the filament broke apart at the limb, another sunspot group begins cresting into view. The solar wind is still showing that we are in the coronal hole stream. It's weak, however, not producing geomagnetic storms. But that CME from the 11th should arrive and impact Earth before we see each other tomorrow morning. Eyes open for the interplanetary shock wave. The main bulk of this coronal hole is well south, and our only quake factor at the moment. We didn't see anything in the 6 magnitude range the last day, but a rare 5 pointer struck Oklahoma which always sends one's mind in the fracking direction. Put it on your calendar, folks. A special solar eclipse that may only be visible from the eastern world and western Pacific, but which happens as Jupiter opposes the sun. Should be some fireworks. We also have a great video out from the ESA accompanying a disappointing article. Rosetta's lander is all but officially dead. No further contact is expected after its initial landing zone was missed and it bounced down into an area where it cannot power on or send signals home to the scientists. The orbiter is still managing to take its own readings for the time being. Fascinating study is out about water scarcity by time of year and global location. Solid map in that article talking about how often finding water can be a problem for those living nearby. Lastly, folks, in the realm of poor scientific morality, an enormous database of chemical toxicity indicators is being withheld by the European Chemical Agency. It could reduce animal torture, I mean testing, and could indicate which of the thousands of untested chemicals on the market in the United States are actually poisonous. Wonder how much they're getting paid by the industry to keep it quiet? I say we hit them up and ask them. Do some good, and tell each to release the information to the public. There was more than our project announcement preview in yesterday's Fly on the Wall episode. We added perspective to the climate situation and dove deep into the Casimir effect, where the electric universe and mainstream science finally collide. Also, folks, we have only 20 books left of the 500 that came off the line, and we don't plan on getting more for a while. otf.cells.com to get one of the limited editions remaining. FYI, a couple were damaged in shipping, and those are now available as well at a small discount. I've got pressure in the next day's precipitation in our top viewer locations, followed by shots of our star to close. It's 6.20 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.